What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, Michael, back with another video again, guys. I'm back. I apologize for those who have been wondering where my videos were the past couple of weeks. I picked up a second job at the hospital, and hours have been crazy, so I've been either at work or in my bed sleeping. So I apologize about that, guys. It's my job to make sure I give consistent videos week in and week out. I haven't done that, guys. I'm sorry, but starting from now on, I am back doing it once again uh and what oh y'all want to hear what what my, what my thoughts are I, I know y'all do so uh there's no there's no secret so let's go ahead and get into it um so i'm gonna start with uh i already did iowa state i'm gonna start with texas tech uh if you had told me at the beginning of the year that the texas tech defense would hold tcu to 14 points i would have told you you are you are crazy uh, but that's exactly what they did. Uh, the defense did its job in my mind. If you hold a big 12 team to 17 points, then you're all automatically probably going to win that game. And with our offense, we did it. Uh, had a couple of drops again, more missed tackling. Uh, Sean Robinson was again, inconsistent, dumb mistakes. And the offensive line could not block a single soul. Uh, Sean Robinson was under duress the entire night. The offensive line could not open holes for our running backs. And um, again, Sonny Cumbie failed to make adjustments and at least give Michael Collins a shot. So uh, Sean Robinson got in some kind of a groove in a couple of drives, led down to a touchdown. Uh, and then on the final drive, he's he's in a he's in a rhythm. He's getting in some kind of a rhythm, and then on a fourth and three, I believe it was at the end of the game, he made a play. He's a dual threat quarterback. He made a play with his feet, got in the open field, and I don't know what the hell happened. The dumbest fumble I've ever seen. I don't know what he tried to do. Uh, it was frustrating again, but uh, after the replay, it showed that a wide-open Tay Barber was on the sideline. And Sean Robinson did not throw that ball and his eyes were not down the field for whatever reason, I do not know. Um, but we end up losing the game. And once again, I am not only frustrated with Sean Robinson, guys. I want y'all to be clear. Sean Robinson is not my only concern. This offensive line is horrible. Sonny Cumby is starting to irk my nerve, guys. And this defense is starting to fall apart. The best defense in the Big 12 is starting to fall apart. Uh, so that was that. Next week, getting into Oklahoma. Uh, I'm expecting TCU to, to honestly score some points uh, because, again, it is Oklahoma's defense. But at the same time, I am so scared to see what Oklahoma is going to do against our defense because our defense could be the best in the country. But when they play Oklahoma, Oklahoma will have their number. I don't care what you tell me until they prove that they can beat Oklahoma and that they can hold them to respectable points. They just have not shown that. They, they have not shown me that. So... um Heading into that game, I'm expecting, okay, Sean Robinson's going to find a groove early on. Wrong. In the first quarter, he had like 17 yards passing. And immediately in my mind, if you can't get the ball going against this Oklahoma defense, I'm sorry, but you need to get out of the game. I did not get to see this game live. I was working, so I recorded the game, watched it afterwards, and my goodness, I mean, uh... First off, I mean, the Oklahoma defense did pretty good. Uh, they, they did tackle well. They, they did better on tackling. Um, they had some better coverage schemes I saw, and they got after the quarterback a little bit better. But then again, TCU's offensive line sucks. So um, they were able to do some things. They got off the field early on, and that's what basically separated them and the game. So eventually, the game breaks open. Oklahoma's leading 28-7. to Finally... Uh, Michael Collins gets his shot. And what do you know? TCU's back in the game, 28-21. to 21, And Michael Collins can only do so much. 
and apparently he had a huge blister on his throwing hand, I believe. And I mean, moral of the story, guys, Kyler Murray did what Kyler Murray does. He responded well to a loss heading into that game, guys. I was kind of, you know, uh, I was a little skeptical of how Kyler Murray will bounce back from a loss because he's done so much winning in his career. He doesn't know what a loss feels like, and I didn't know how he would respond to a loss. So I was a little bit skeptical heading into the game, which kind of gave me a thought that TCU might have a shot, but guys Kyler Murray did what Kyler Murray get, does guys like he I believe he completely forgot about the Texas game came back and whooped TCU's behind so good for OU um again you know in his games was out for the year uh Nico Small did not play in that game and you know th this young defense uh starting to turn into a really young defense is you know learning but getting picked apart at the same time so after Oklahoma guys um during the week heading into Kansas, we get word that TCU star player Kevontae Turpin gets arrested. I wake up, I get the notification, and that's all it said. All I know is that he got arrested. That's it. There were no details, no nothing. So I'm sitting here, I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe maybe there's a chance he plays in Lawrence this weekend. Uh, maybe he'll be out for a couple of weeks, and then he'll play, start playing again. And then details emerged. And yes, I have lost all respect for this guy. Uh, a guy that I loved, a guy that I respected, a guy that I had his back week in and week out. And I mean, guys, I mean, same thing with, when it came to the Ohio State thing. You put your hands on women, guys. I'm not going to have any respect for you. And if for those of you that don't know the details, uh, it's believed that Kevontae Turpin uh, found out or was thinking that his girlfriend was allegedly sending photos of herself to other men. And Turpin found out, got angry, and dragged his girlfriend across the parking lot and slammed her on the floor. Um, and police were called, he was detained, and he was arrested. Uh, as soon as I found out the details, I didn't want to see him in a TCU uniform again. I did not want to see him. If he would have played again, guys, if Gary Patterson would have said, I'm going to let him play again, then I'll be the first to say that I would have lost all respect for Gary Patterson. All this 21 years of building at TCU that you've done. And if you would have let Turpin play after that, all of that would have gone down the drain. So I praised Gary Patterson for doing what he did. I know he didn't want to do it. I know he didn't like to do it. But he has principles. He has morals, not just for himself, but for the standards he holds his team and his coaches too. So he did the right thing. Yes, it sucks for Turpin because all year I heard scouts were coming to see Turpin, to see Turpin. That's what I heard. And he flushed all that down the drain. He flushed it all down the drain. He apparently he did not need us more than we needed him. So um, no matter what, guys, like getting a little bit away from football, guys, no matter what's going on, guys, don't put your hands on somebody because I mean, especially if it's a woman, do not go and put your hands on someone, whether if it's in a relationship, someone stole something from you or someone said something about you guys, just brush it off, guys. Putting your hands on someone is not worth it. Five to 10 years is not worth it, guys. It is not worth it. Be a grown adult. Learn how to talk to someone. Learn how to just talk and so be it. It's over. Or just don't brush it off and don't talk to them at all. Don't go and put your hands on someone, guys. Don't. I, I, Me, personally, I just can't fathom the thought of putting your hands on a woman. I just can't do it. I, I can't understand that concept. I can't understand it. I just can't. I'm sorry. If I found out that, uh, that, that a girl that I was with, my girlfriend, if I found out that she was sending pictures, then I would address it. I would talk to her. And yes, I would be angry, 
but I'm not going to bash her face in. I'm not going to do that. So guys, just a quick story. It's not worth it. Okay. Think about it. Be angry. It's okay to be angry, but it's not okay to be stupid. All right. Think before you act. Same thing with think before you speak. Think before you act, guys. Think down the, lo uh, down the road. What long-term consequences are, are, is this going to have? Because this is going to show up on your record now, guys. Just remember that. You assault someone, it's going to show up on your record. If you want to get that promotion, if you want to get that new job and they do a background check and they see that on your record, probably not going to hire you. So, especially for you young people, if you're watching this, guys, just don't put your hands on anybody, all right? Just don't. It's not worth it, all right, guys? All right, so getting back to football, um, again, I don't want to see Turpin on the football field ever again. Uh, personally, I want to see him come back, uh, not on the football field. I want to see him come back as a man. I want to see him. I know he can recover from this. I support him as a fan, but in terms of, hey, if I want to see you on the football field, do I think you deserve another shot at the football field? No, I don't. But I hope he can learn from this, guys. I hope he can be better from this. And I hope that he can move forward in his life. Uh, so now let's get back into the football game. So our left guard, Cardell Iguagu, was expected to play in this game. He suffered a setback during practice. He did not play. In his games, did not play. Ty Summers got injured in the first quarter. Nico Small played two series, got injured. And... Uh, early on, I thought, uh, the TCU defense held its own, um, and Kansas got to like a seven to three lead. I thought Michael Collins was doing good. I thought Michael Collins was doing great. I thought he managed the game well. And, um, and we have a 10 to seven lead before you know it. Um, I think it was a 10 to seven lead going into halftime. I believe, I think, uh, again, I did not watch the get, get to watch the game live, but when it came to the second half, while I was work, I was able to like watch it on my phone. So, um, so I watched it and apparently TCU defense did really good in the first half, but in the second half, they just couldn't stop anyone. They, they couldn't tackle. Uh, and, uh, Michael Collins struggled a little bit, but uh, a couple of balls that were underthrown, like the one to Jalen Rager that he got hurt on, he could have led him even more and they would have gotten a touchdown, but he underthrew it and he had to have Jalen Rager work a little bit more than what, really what he should have. But uh, it was a good ball for his first start, uh, his first D1 start. And I I'm proud of these young guys that stepped up, you know, the John Stevens of the world, the Najee Meekings, the Tay Barbers. I'm I'm proud of the young guys. Uh, I'm kind of proud of the offensive line. But although I got to remember who we were playing, uh, they did their job. They did what they were supposed to do. But guys. Um, TCU is losing 27 to 24. And they're driving the field. They're moving. They're making good work. I'm expecting them to score a touchdown to win the game. And um, before you know it, Darius Anderson runs into his own guy and fumbles the football and Kansas State recovers. It's um, after the game yesterday, guys, I this was rock bottom. This was rock bottom for this team. Uh, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to feel. I didn't, couldn't quite put it into words. Um, I, I I'm shocked, guys. I'm I'm shocked to see how this season has gone. Uh, you know, coming into this year, I thought we were going to be had a good chance to win the Big 12. I thought um, we would have been 10 and two. We would have been nine and three. But. Uh, I mean, poor offensive line play, inconsistent quarterback play, inconsistent running game, drop balls, poor tackling injuries, poor adjustments on the offensive side. I mean, guys, it hasn't come together. 
you know, even before the season started, our star defensive tackle, Ross Blacklock, tore his ACL. And then, guys, if I'm really being honest, I think I think that um that that Ohio State game, guys, that that game sent this team downhill. I mean, if I'm being honest with you guys, me as a fan, that game sent me downhill. That game, when I was watching that game, guys, I had so much emotion, so much passion. I lost my voice, guys. I wanted that game so much. And in that third quarter, guys, I felt like my heart dropped. I felt like after the game, I was just, I had no emotion. I was tired. I was, I was gone. And I feel like as a fan, if that happened to me, I can't imagine what that did to that team. Um, I can be honest in saying that that was the big game of the season. You know, you're playing the number four ranked team in the country. You're playing a blue, bu a blue blood and that, that shot this team's confidence. You know, after the game, it didn't shoot my confidence in this team. I thought we were going to be good this year. Uh, probably even better than what I thought we would have. But, you know, uh, if I'm being honest, guys, that game sent us downhill. Injuries have mounted. I don't know how long Ty Summers is going to be out. I don't know how long Nico Small is going to be out. I don't know how long Cardo Iguagua is going to be out. Those of you that don't know, Sean Robinson is having season-ending shoulder surgery. Um, and guys, I, I, I don't know. Like, I can't imagine how Darius Anderson feels. Uh, this is embarrassing, guys. This is embarrassing. Like, I don't know. There's no way to face it. You know, I'm, I'm here. I'm facing it. I'm facing it with you guys. You know, if y'all want to troll me, if y'all want to come at me, whether if it's on Twitter or YouTube, I will do what I've always done. I will answer the comments. I will come back at y'all. I will, I will be still be behind this team. You know, I don't want y'all. I don't want y'all to think that because we're losing, you know, I'm stepping away. I'm not gonna do videos anymore. No, we had the most embarrassing loss of the Garrett Patterson era, and I'm coming back less than 24 hours later and giving y'all a video. Um, there's just no excuse for it. We had 507 yards of total offense, and we allowed Kansas 307 yards of total offense, and we still lose the damn game. I don't know what it is about coughing up the damn football with this team. It has become so contagious. They don't know how to protect the damn football anymore. Game after game, they choke and they choke and they choke. They don't know how to win. They don't. I am sick of this year. I am sick of this season. I'm sick of it. Time, a mistake after mistake. Turnover after turnover. Loss after loss. Sonny Cumbie, oh my. I had your back. All last season, because it was your first season. But now, you have some answering to do. I am putting him on the hot seat. Because game after game, there is no damn adjustment. He does the same stupid screens over and over. The same... The same stuff. Over and over. He didn't want to give Michael Collins a shot. Because he's too ignorant. He loves Sean Robinson. I do too. But you got to understand, as a coach, it's not working. Things are not consistent. Maybe this guy can give us a shot of energy. Maybe this guy can be more consistent for us to win games. All right? I, I commend you for sticking with your heart and sticking with the guy that you love, that you recruited. But at the same time, Sonny, you have to get him the hell out of the game and understand that he does not get it. He is making mistakes after mistakes. He is not consistent. Michael Collins was consistent yesterday. But damn. Damn. When it came time in the fourth quarter, two turnovers. Two turnovers in the fourth quarter. You're going to lose every time. I promise you. I'm Guys, I have hit rock bottom with this team. As a fan, I have hit rock bottom. T technically, yes. Is there a chance for a bowl game? Yes. Is it going to happen? I don't think so. We, we will, I, I'm going to quote Gary Patterson. When this thing, when this season's over, we're probably going to be three and nine. 
We're probably going to lose to Kansas State. We're probably going to get destroyed against uh, against Oklahoma State. We're probably going to get destroyed against West Virginia. We might put up a fight against Baylor, but we'll automatically lose. I mean, we have four games left, and we got to win three of them. I, I mean, guys, these th these young guys, they're still learning, but guys, before you can learn how to win games, you have to learn how to not lose them. You have to learn how to not lose them before you learn how to win them. And this team, all they know is how to lose games. They, I'm sorry, guys, I'm speaking my mind. I'm, I'm being a realist. They do, all they know how to do is how to lose games. I'm not going to sit here and talk about, well, this is going to be great for 2019. I'm not going to talk. We're not in 2019 yet. So y'all want to hear about 2018. I'm not here to bring you 2019. When 2018 is over, then I'll talk about how this season can translate to 2019. But we're not there yet. So we're not going to do that. I'm not going to do that to y'all. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to sit here. I'm going to talk about our struggles. I'm going to talk about what we suck at. I'm going to talk about what the problem is. And guys, there are so many problems with this team. With this team, guys. I mean, if I'm Gary Patterson, hey, do I give Curtis Looper a shot at play calling? Maybe. You know, <laughs> I'm not even going to lie. I thought about, hey, could we bring Doug Meacham back? Because <laughs> he's without a job right now. Could we bring him back? Who knows, guys? Who knows? Uh, but guys, oh, I, um, I don't know what else to say, guys. I definitely think if I would have done this video yesterday after the game, yeah, there would have been a lot of stuff being said, but right now, you know, I was able to clear my head instead of speaking out of my behind, I'm going to come up here, speak with my head, speak logically, speak real. And that's, uh, I believe that's all I have to say, guys. Uh, am I disappointed? Yes. Am I embarrassed for this team? Yes. Uh, has this season gone the way I thought it would? Zero chance. Zero chance it has. Um, now I'm hoping today that my Colts can get me in a much better mood. <laughs> but, uh, right now, guys, that's just it. When you're young, you got to learn how not to lose games before you learn how to win them. And uh, this season is far worse than, two, than 2013. This is the worst season, I think, in the Gary Patterson era. No, I'm not calling for Gary Patterson's job. Nope. Not a chance. But guys... I am curious to see what these players do once the season is over with this new transfer rule. Are they going to be a coward? Are they going to run away from this team because things got hard? Or are they going to stick with this team through the rough times? Or are they going to take responsibility and say, hey, we need to get better? And they're going to come back. Still remains to be seen. But if I didn't know any better, um, guys, I'm going to, uh, right now I'm going to say this team doesn't make a bowl. And it breaks my heart because I want to see Jalen Austin uh, extend his career. I want to see Ty Summers extend his career. I want to see uh, Nico Small extend his career. I want to see Ben Banigou, LJ Collier extend their careers, guys. Uh, but, um uh, Fortunately, that's probably not going to happen. But, I mean, I, hey, how is this team going to respond? How is this team going to respond? I want to see them respond great. But, guys, until I see results, it's going to be the same thing. So, uh, I guess that'll do it for this video, guys. Um going to go ahead and upload right now. If you're new, please subscribe to my channel, guys. I appreciate all y'all. Uh, who have come at me uh, during the times I haven't been given videos. I appreciate y'all that consistently watch my stuff, my content, and I appreciate y'all if y'all follow me on Twitter and subscribe to my channel, guys. I truly appreciate it. Season hasn't gone the way uh, we had hoped, but we're still here, still giving y'all content, and I'm, uh, I'm here through the good and the bad, guys.
I'm going to roll with this team, and I'm going to have this team's back. So um, I guess that'll do it, guys. I hope you all enjoy y'all 